it's quite reasonable to say that the northeastern region of India is one of the most underestimated tourist destinations in the entire world. The land of red rivers and blue hills, the land of the rising sun, the land of peace and tranquility, the abode of clouds. Yes, these phrases do justice to the beauty and uniqueness of India's northeastern states which are considered to be among the most biodiverse regions in the world. Historically, forest, agriculture and other natural resources played a significant role in the cultural landscape of the region which gave birth to a very rich tribal heritage. Indigenous religious traditions, cultures and crafts flourished because the region managed to remain untouched by Western religious and commercial monocultures for a very long time. The northeastern region of India is not an ordinary place by any means. India is the second largest producer of silk in the world and its northeastern states are among the biggest contributors. Tripura is the second largest natural rubber producer in the country. Assam has the largest tea growing area in the world with about one-seventh of the global tea production. 50% of the country's overall tea production takes place in Assam. In terms of bamboo genetic resources, India is the second richest country in the world after China. Over 50% of bamboo species occur in eastern India. The whole region is endowed with deposits of various minerals and many of them are not yet fully explored. The first oil well in Asia was drilled in Assam and the state is also the third largest producer of petroleum and natural gas in India. With its 600 million tons of oil and gas reserves, Nagaland alone could boost India's onshore oil and gas production by 75%. Arunachal Pradesh alone has more than one-third of the country's total identified hydropower potential, above 25 megawatts. When it comes to physical infrastructure, a lot of work is in progress. In Manipur, the world's tallest railway bridge and India's longest tunnel are under construction. A trilateral agreement with Thailand and Myanmar is in place to construct a trans-Asian highway which will connect India to the two countries and will make the region a real gateway to East and Southeast Asia. The region already has the longest rail come road bridge in the country. It is considered to be one of the biodiversity hotspots of the world and it supports about 50% of India's biodiversity. It supports one of the highest bird diversities in the East, with about 850 of the 1,200 bird species known on the Indian subcontinent. Of the nine important vegetation types of India, six are found in the northeastern region. The region is the center of origin of citrus fruits, it is rich in wild relatives of crop plants and it has been identified as a center of rice germplasm. 16 of India's 104 national parks are located in its eight northeastern states. The entire eastern Himalayas region was identified in the WWF's Global 200 Ecoregion list and Conservation International included the entire eight states of the northeast in its eastern Himalaya hotspot. In physiographical terms, the region can be categorized into the Northeast Hills, the Eastern Himalayas, and the Brahmaputra and Barag Valley Plains. Sikkim has the world's third highest peak, the Kanchenzanga. Meghalaya has some of the deepest and longest caves in South Asia. Tropical rainforests, alpine meadows, cold deserts, the region is truly blessed. With as many as 8,000 species, India is the world's second largest exporter of medicinal plants. 40,000 herbal formulations derived from these medicinal plants form the backbone of India's rich, traditional medicine-based healthcare system. Hundreds of medicinal plants are native to the northeastern region of India. These tribal, traditional homes are relevant today. They demonstrate original sustainable living and sophisticated engineering skills. In Nagaland, during discussions with the local people, it was noted that the majority of these houses survived during major earthquakes in the past. In India, the number of individual groups which are registered as scheduled tribes is around 700. 
States like Odisha, Karnataka, Maharashtra top the list. Nearly 140 tribal communities live in the eight northeastern states of India. The region is a melting pot with multiple ethnicities, cultures and religions. The total population of Northeast India is 46 million, and 68% of that population resides in Assam. There are about 220 languages spoken in these states, belonging to multiple language families. Sikkim, the world's first 100% organic state, has become the role model for the entire world in organic farming. Unique environmental conditions for development of floriculture makes it the kingdom of flowers. India is the largest producer of large cardamom in the world. A vast majority of that is produced in Sikkim. 84 glaciers, 315 glacial lakes, 10 mountain peaks, 5 hot springs, 8 mountain passes, 200 monasteries. This place is a paradise for tourists. Mohsin Ram is the wettest place in the world. Molin Long was declared the cleanest village in Asia. The crystal clear water of the Ongnad River, Living Root Bridges, one of the world's oldest golf courses, some of the deepest and longest caves in South Asia, a solid school and college infrastructure. There is no other place like Megalia in the entire world. One of the most fascinating sites of Megalia is the tribal community, Garo. They are one of the few remaining matrilineal societies in the world. Their traditional tribal architecture is an excellent example of vernacular architecture, which should serve as an inspiration for everyone who is involved in sustainable construction and architecture. Tripura A place where Tripuris, Bengalis, Manipuris and few other tribes live together. The land of rock-cut carvings, ancient temples, and the famous Ujayanta Palace, which was built by Maharaja Radha Kishore Manikya. Arunachal Pradesh gets a mention in Kalika Purana and Mahabharata, which are Dharmic literature from ancient India. One of the oldest and the largest Buddhist monasteries is situated in Arunachal Pradesh. The state is also the birthplace of the sixth Dalai Lama. Life-transforming and self-awakening moments in such a tranquil setting come naturally. This is Kaziranga National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There was a time when this magnificent animal was close to extinction. The conservation of the one-horned Indian rhino in the last few decades is a phenomenal success story. Satria dance from Assam is one of the most important Indian classical dances. Sri Kanakanta Bora is one of the most eminent gurus of Satria dance. His home is Guwahati, the most populous city of the entire northeastern region and the land of Goddess Kamakya, whose temple is one of the oldest Shakti pits of India. Each folk dance from Assam has a deep meaning and a fascinating story of its evolution. Efforts are being made to ensure that these cultures are not diluted. This is a Karbi home. These traditional tribal homes are some of the finest examples of India's rich heritage, a combination of intelligent engineering and sustainable living. Totally relevant in the 21st century, there is a lot to learn from and admire in these communities, which are culturally very advanced. A 90-minute drive from the largest freshwater lake in northeast India brought us to Imphal, the capital city of Manipur. The most important landmark 
and a symbol of Manipur's ancient glory is located close to the banks of the Imphal River, Kangla Palace. For centuries, this land was an epicenter of political, religious and cultural activities. Unfortunately, it also became a target for invaders. Manipuri rulers faced invasions and hostility from Burma and from the British. The British occupied Kangla Fort in 1891 and these two massive iconic Kangla Shah were totally destroyed by them. Today, in independent India, they stand tall, fully restored and rebuilt, reflecting the golden heritage of Manipur. Vaishnavism is one of the most important Vedic traditions and Manipur is one of the most important historic centers. Raslila, a classical Indian dance form, has its roots in Manipur. In the entire northeastern region of India, Manipur has the highest number of handicrafts unit and skilled handicraft artisans. Some of these exquisite Manipuri handlooms and other household items can be purchased in a unique all-women market run by more than 3,000 women. Imas means mothers, and this market is called Imakifal. This beautiful traditional costume is called Fanek. Whether college girls or professionals, Fanek is loved by everyone, and it is a significant component of Manipuri dress and culture. Friendly Manipuri people open their homes and hearts for their guests. Their simplicity and hospitality are absolutely heart-touching. There is no surprise that Manipur is known as the Jewel of India. Many foreign tourists may not even know where Mizoram is or who these friendly and hardworking Mizo people are. The state has the highest concentration of protected tribal people in India and today almost all of them are Christians. It is December 25, and people are gathering for prayers and for a big evening feast. The prayers, musical concerts and other Christmas celebrations will continue for a few days. It is the biggest holiday season in the state. This is Sailova, one of the most well-known Miso singers. Today, Sailova is performing at a Christmas team event in Aizol. You will find either a musician or a footballer in virtually every other home. Many emerging and well-known footballers in India are from this state. In the future, if India improves its football infrastructure, its stature will grow in the world of football and Mizoram will very likely play a key role in this. During World War II, the Japanese invaded India, which at that time was a colony of Britain. Kohima in Nagaland was an important battlefield in 1944. Since then, Nagaland has come a long way. Music is an integral part of the Subong family, which resides in Dimapur, the largest city in Nagaland. Arnella is a well-known artist with multiple skills. In 2005, she was appointed as Guru by the Indian government's Ministry of Culture for her immense contributions and in order to fully utilize her knowledge and skills in music. Together with her husband, she co-founded a Biogenesis, a band that wanted to preserve the tribal ethos and unify all Naga tribes.
the band developed a new world music genre called Hoi, which is a fusion of modern rhythm with Naga folk tunes. Today, the couple is also involved in film production. I did a lead film, a short film, a very low budget film called Lijaba's Daughter in the beginning. And uh, it had lots of technical flaws, uh, but it could still attract people from the outside world. So my film Lijaba's Daughter was uh, screened in Moscow. Uh, and um, it uh, by the days of ethnographic and uh, my film was amongst uh, some of the films from India and from the rest of the world and the university students and the scholars and anthropologists were really uh, f f they really felt and uh, it really attracted them and some of them even came for research after seeing the, my movie Lichaba's Daughter the Subong family is determined to preserve Nagaland's cultural heritage and through music and films they are playing their part. The cultural wealth of Nagaland is very visible during the annual Hornbill Festival, which is attended by many tourists from all over the world. To my mind, there is no other place in the world which can match India's northeastern states. They represent our planet's hidden treasure. Yes, it may be true that Western commercial and religious monocultures have diluted many indigenous traditions as well as the diversity in this region, but the land is still culturally rich and diverse. Even with this film, I barely scratched the surface. There is a lot that we can learn from these people. Their resilience, simplicity and hospitality can touch anyone in so many more ways than I can articulate. These eight northeastern states are India's hidden gems. See you again.